Thank you, Mr. President. Members, we've heard a number of justifications for this legislation. I want to examine them in turn. First, we heard that the people of Wake County will get to vote for more representatives under this bill. That is untrue. If this law, if this bill becomes law, yes, there will be more county commissioners, nine instead of seven. But under the current law, every member of Wake County gets to elect all seven commissioners. Under this proposal, you get to vote for your one district member and one super district member. That's two commissioners. Two is less than seven. This bill will disenfranchise the people of Wake County. Second, we heard that the people of Wake County get to vote for two at-large representatives. This, too, is untrue. Under current law, all commissioners are at-large, which means they're elected by the entire jurisdiction, which in this case is the county. Running at-large ensures that the commissioners have the interest of the entire county, the whole county, when carrying out their duties. Running countywide serves to moderate the commissioners of both parties. If the Republicans get too extreme, the voters will kick them out. If the Democrats get too extreme, the voters will kick them out. And that's exactly what the people of Wake County have done. Over the last 20 years, Republicans have held the majority for 12 years, Democrats for eight. Under this bill, not a single member of the nine will be elected countywide. Instead, we'll have two super districts, one a donut, and the other the ugliest munchkin I've ever seen. That's what the black line is. These are purely partisan districts. It is guaranteed the one will be a Democrat, the other will be a Republican. Why is that a problem? Because those members will not have the interest of the entire county in mind. They will only have the interest of their electoral base. They will not seek compromise. They will not seek common ground. They will seek to pursue partisan agendas. Third, we were assured that under this new plan, we heard it again today, that the people of Eastern Wake County and the suburban parts of the county will get more representation. This is untrue. Districts cannot guarantee that any town has a representative on the commission unless the district is drawn exclusively from that town. This map doesn't do that. You can't do that. There are 12 jurisdictions, but there's only seven districts. In fact, it makes the situation potentially worse. Under this plan, all but one of the nine districts overlays the city of Robin. So we can have a situation where eight of the nine members of this new county commission hail from the city of Raleigh. Is that what you want? Look at this map. Look at this pink monstrosity. It goes from the far left, which is Briar Creek, that's Angus Barn and the airport, for those of you who need a little grounding. It goes up by Falls Lake, circles to the right toward the east, picks up Rollsville, then it goes down gets Wendell and Zebulon before ending up down here in Garner. There is nothing in this map that guarantees the people of Wendell or Zebulon will have any representation. They may be represented by somebody who lives right beside the airport on the entire other side of the county. At least have your map achieve the objectives you state you care about. That's how districts work. Every resident in the district has an equal right to run for that seat. That's why Franklin County does not have a single senator representing Franklin County here in this chamber. They're represented by a senator who lives in Wake County. He's one of five Wake County residents. Surely you all do not believe that the people of Franklin County are disenfranchised and not well represented by Senator Chad Barefoot. Fourth and finally, we were told this new map will result in cheaper elections, less expensive. Maybe, maybe, but there is no direct correlation between the size of the election and its expense. In 2014, the county commissions ran countywide, jurisdiction, one million people. They spent on average $110,000. Senator Barefoot ran in a district of 200,000 people. 
and spent $1.2 million. He spent 10 times as much on average as the average county commissioner in a district that's one-fifth the population. Smaller does not necessarily mean cheaper. If these justifications don't hold up, then what's going on with this bill? The bill sponsor was quoted in the newspaper as saying that discussions have been going on among members of the WAVE delegation for quite some time, and they were all working out the details together. That's rich, very rich. Our WAVE delegation meets every week. We've been discussing local bills for the last month. Not once was this local bill put forward in front of our delegation. He may have consulted with Senators Berenger and Senator Alexander. They may have had their input, but he didn't have the respect for either Senator Blue or me to talk to us about this bill. The first we heard about it was when it was introduced a mere one or two hours before it had its first committee meeting. Senator Blue is the only delegation member to have been elected both countywide and in the chamber and in the district. Senator Blue has served in this institution for 32 years. He knows more about redistricting, I wager, than any person, Senator Rucho, maybe notwithstanding, <laughs> than any other member in this illustrious body. Meanwhile, the bill sponsor, he just completed his first term. That's not to say his ideas aren't with value or our ideas aren't with value. Every member here serves the same number of constituents. All our ideas are worthy of consideration. Senator Scott, let's keep your remarks to the bill specifically, please. It is entirely on point, and I will continue to do so, sir. It is to say that there is value in deliberation and consultation because none of us has a monopoly on the truth or wisdom. This legislation has been developed through a terrible process and as a result is a bad bill. Had the bill sponsor engaged either Senator Blue or me, we could have potentially come up with a solution that we all agreed upon to achieve his stated objectives, if they're in fact sincere. One possible solution would be to keep the current districts for district-based elections and layer on top of them four at-large representatives. The current districts are superior to these districts because they have legitimacy, as I stated earlier. They've both been created and endorsed by the county commission. They are substantially more compact, which means that there will be more commonality of interest by the residents in those districts. I ask staff to compare these districts with the current districts. And I, if you can put that analysis on the dashboard, it's up there for your consideration. What it shows is that by every measure of compactness, the current map is superior, substantially superior than this proposed map. Furthermore, the current map doesn't split a single precinct in the entire county. This proposal splits 21. Splitting precincts creates confusion among voters and adds costs to the county. Look at the proposed map. Look at the, I actually put forward on the dashboard, if you would please, the current map. Y'all don't know what that looks like. This is the current map. If you look at it. Senator Stein, you have one second for refresh here. Okay, the map's up. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. President. Appreciate that. So this is the current map. It's all entirely rational. They're relatively compact. You see, you got one in northwest, you got one in northeast, southeast, central, and a couple on the western side of the county. You compare it to this map, which frankly looks like a map that I would have drawn in kindergarten with a crown after eating too many Girl Scout cooked at Senator Bain. If we added four at-large seats, those four members would consider the interests of the whole county. And this is important. Every member, every citizen in Wake County would get to elect five representatives, their district representative and four at-large. Under the current map, as we've already said, you only get to vote for two. Of course, under current law, you get to vote for seven. Look, this proposal I just said may or may not be a good one, may not be the best one, but if we had had a conversation, perhaps we could have come up with a decent idea that all of us could have gotten behind, and we wouldn't have had to turn this into a partisan battle. But the bill sponsor didn't do this, and that he did not, I think, is telling and troubling. 
This bill has the potential to exact real costs on Wake County. It insults the one million residents of Wake County whose votes in the last election are being nullified by legislative fiat and whose opinions are being ignored because of the last vote you all passed because you denied them the opportunity to weigh in with a referendum to determine whether this gerrymander is a good idea or not. It will result in worse, more divisive, narrower-minded, more partisan governance over time. That is not in the long-term interest of our county, both politically and economically. But if your goal is purely instrumental, if you only care about the income outcomes, yeah, it's true, this will result in more Republican county commissioners. You can't do this. You have the votes. You have the power. We all know it. The question is whether you have the wisdom, the restraint, the respect for the people of Wake County, the statesmanship to not do it even though you can. I surely hope we vote down this bill. Thank you, Mr. President.